Why do you want to keep doing it? And how, how are you going to follow through? Because you're following through because it matters to you. Okay. So again, I'm, Everything I do about coaching and coaching is all about bringing the power back to you. So we're not going to talk about your spouse (laughs) in case you were mistaken about that. It's all about you and doing the inner work yourself because then that is what changes relationships. Okay. The next topic or the next thing that I got from that we from listening to the pod, re-listening to the podcast was again when your spouse chooses to be at a different spiritual level or chooses to leave the church or chooses to stop doing the things that he used to do or, or whatever it is that you think is different than what you wanted him to do. Again, going back to the expectations and manuals that I mean that I always talk about, right? When your manuals of what a a good father, a good husband, a good religious follower of Christ should look like it is, is set on stone, right? And you have all these check boxes, and then you go and look up, and reality doesn't match. You're like, this blueprint that you have in your head does not align with a blueprint outside of you, with reality. And you're like trying to force it together, trying to put two puzzle pieces together. Have you ever tried to do that? It looks horrible. You're like, no, but it fits. Look, it's the same shape. It should fit here. And you're like trying to jam it and like and make it fit. That's what you're doing. When you have a manual of how your husband or spouse should be as a spiritual head of the household or spiritually in whatever place he you think they should be, and the reality is different, you're just trying to jam two puzzle pieces that were never meant to go into just forcing them to go together, okay? So know, first of all, that there is not a problem that you don't need to fix him or fix it, (laughs) okay? Nothing has gone wrong. You don't need to fix them. You just need to let them fix it. Huh. I know that's hard. I know because you're so used to trying to fix problems for everyone, for your kids. And you see your spouse and you want to make them happy, right? And you see them struggling and you're like, but I have the answers. I know. I know. Can I tell you, please, 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 can I tell you the answer, please? And, And your life will be so much better. Trust me. Okay, please let me tell you. And they're like, no, I, like, I got it. And even, even when they come to you and ask you, what do you think I should do? I dare you to not say anything and just say back, I don't know. What do you think you should do? Give them the power back. Give them the authority to solve their own problems on their own. Trust me, it'll build their self-esteem, their self-trust, their self-love. You don't know better. You think you do? You think you know them? But honey, they don't even know themselves. So what makes you think you know them? My husband keeps telling me, oh my gosh, you know me so well. I'm like, no, I don't. I'm just good at what I do. I'm just a good coach. <laughs> I, that's that's it. Um I don't know you as well as you should know yourself. Trust me. So no, you think you know what's best for them. You think they should be doing X, Y, and Z so they can get over this pain, so they can have a better life, so they're, they, they, their struggles would end. But that's not for you to say. This is, there's nothing wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with what they're going through. It is what they're meant to go through. And the moment you start letting go of trying to help them, trying to fix their problems, you'll free up so much space inside you and time and energy that you can use to just love on them, to just have 
the safety in your arms, in your head, for them to just come to you and tell you, I'm having, I'm struggling spiritually, or I don't believe in this, or I, I'm struggling with my faith. And you get to just be there. And I was telling this to someone the other day that was asking me, how, like, he comes to me and expects me to solve all his problems. And I already have my own problems. And I already have so much to worry about. I can't worry about him. And I'm like, yeah, I like, know that's so frustrating. You guys are in this dance where you tell each other your problems and then you expect the other person to solve it. But what if you don't have to solve his problems, fix his emotions, and help him feel better? What if you just get to be the, the open arms where you just listen? So imagine you open your arms and you're holding a garbage bag and you get to let them dump all their crap, vomit everything they're going through. And, you, and when they're done... Or while they're talking to you, you just get to validate and do the mirror talk. Just, yeah, that sounds horrible. Yeah, it sounds like you're feeling so frustrated. It sounds like you're in pain. Just mirror what you hear. That's all you get to do. And hold that bag. And, as, and the moment they walk away, whether they walk away happy because you heard them or angry because you didn't give them an answer whatever they choose to do, it's not your responsibility. You get to tie that garbage bag and go and throw it in the dumpster. You do not have the responsibility to hold on and carry that because it'll start stinking and it'll start getting heavy. And that is not yours to carry. You can let that go. The same goes with how your husband is spiritually. Okay. Another point that we talked about in this episode was the, the, the fact that we are all at different levels. We are never going to be at the same level spiritually equally. That's rare. Okay. Because we're imperfect human beings we're all going to be, we're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to go through our own faith crisis several times in our lifetime. And what stage of our faith process or our spirituality we are is individual. I used to think, because I don't know where the heck I got this belief, where husband and wife should be 50-50. If I'm giving 100, you should give 100 as, oh my gosh, who's this lady? Oh, can't Now the name went away. But there's this really famous person that she has a Netflix uh, show. Anyway, I can't remember her. Her name escaped me. So, but she always, she, she says, like, that's, BS. <laughs> Essentially, that's what she says. The 50-50 rule is BS because we're human beings and we're never going to give the same effort at the same time every single day. No. The goal in marriage is to get together and say, hey, you know what? Today, I have like 10% and I can only give 10%. What can you give? 20 Okay, great. Can you do 40? Can we make it to 50? Great. Okay, awesome. Okay. That is what marriage is all about, is coming together and talking about what can you give today? That's it. It's not, I give 50, so now you get over here and, and do 52. No, that's not how it works, because then that leads to resentment, frustration, and anger instead of connection and collaboration, okay? So when it comes to spirituality, what I want to offer is let your spouse be wherever they want to be. And one way to start appreciating whatever that level of growth and spirituality and healing they are, whatever path they're on. Because I hear this so much, well, I have done all the healing and I expect him to do the same. What? No, 
that's <laughs> that's that's you wanting him to be a completely different person. Then leave him alone and go find someone else that will love him just the way it is. That's not being in an honest relationship. Honest relationship is like I come to you broken and this is how I am. Love me this way. And so, and you come to me broken with all your traumas, with all your baggage, and I'm going to love you the best I can as you are. Not thinking that you're going to be someone else, a better version, and love that better version of yourself. No, no, no. I'm going to love you right now and appreciate you right now for who you are. Again, I'm not saying you have to put up with things. That's where boundaries come in. And I'm going to. I'll put the in the description below uh, the episode on boundaries because I get this a lot. Oh my gosh. So if I love unconditionally, do what does that mean? They get to walk all over me and they get to do whatever they want. Well, first of all, yes, they get to do whatever you want. And so do you. And when they do whatever they want, you get to do whatever you want with whatever that is. You get to set up boundaries and consequences that you get to follow through because you're the one in control. Anyway, I could go on on that one. (laughs) But going back to appreciating their level of spirituality, growth, or healing path that they're on, it goes back to appreciating that whatever their path is, whatever their speed at growth that they go to, that is theirs. And you get to make that mean whatever you want. You can make it mean that they're less than. You can make it mean that they're lazy. You can make it mean that they they don't care, that they're not good fathers. Or you can make it mean that is their journey. That is what they want. And it's okay for them. And if it's okay for them, it's okay for me. You can choose to respect their path and appreciate their path or shame them and try to hurry them to get to where you think they should be and decide for them what their path should look like instead of letting them decide. Notice how it's all about getting out of you. It's not about you. It's about them and their journey. And when we start appreciating their journey for what it is, we stop trying to control them and we stop and we drop the shoots of what they should be doing and where they should be. And we start appreciating them. And when you start appreciating people, you treat them differently and you create a different environment. And when you have a, an environment where you're appreciated and loved and valued and you're worthy, What do you think grows in that environment? What do you think your home will feel and look like if you're in that environment? Just saying, I'm just throwing it out there. In my instance, what happened was, and in the in my client's instance, what have what has happened is people tend to change. People tend to become who you've been wanting them to become, but without you telling them what to do. They just do it naturally. For years, I told my, I wanted my husband to go to church every Sunday with me, even if he didn't believe, even if he wasn't a member, because he should support me and support his children, right? In my head, I had this manual that a a supportive husband and father goes to church to show their kids that that he appreciates them and he loves them by doing the things they don't want to do. How messed up is that? (laughs) Right? In my head, that's that was my manual, one of my manuals, right? When I drop that, and I just and I would ask him, hey, do you want to come to church with us? Oh, no, I don't feel like it. Instead of making it mean, oh, then that means he doesn't support me or his children. I was like, okay, no, wait, no biggie. I'll ask you next week. Thank you. Enjoy your, your time alone. Just keep resting. I did not make it mean that he was less than, less than of a, less of a father or husband. 
I just let him make choices. And guess what? Now he comes more often than ever since we've been married because I stopped judging him and I allowed him to have a say and I allowed him to be on the path that he wants to be without shaming him. Okay. So 